Infantry win firefights, tanks win battles, but artillery win wars. Hello and welcome back to Orspex Tactics, the strategy and tactics focused 40k channel, where we're all about leading the Imperial forces to victory against the tide of traitors and heretics in the 41st millennium. The previous quote is supposedly an old saying among Astra Militarum artillery officers, so let's see if it rings true. Today we'll be taking a look at the artillery powerhouse of the Imperial Guard, the Basilisk, and its mighty Earthshaker cannon, and putting it through its paces. We'll take a look at its datasheet, any obvious buffs, synergies, or ways that we can get more out of it, and how I would personally use them on the tabletop. Now the Basilisk is a very old 40k kit, it's been around longer than the vast majority of models that we see on the tabletop these days, and it's an iconic unit of the Imperial Guard. It's a self-propelled artillery vehicle that mounts the mighty Earthshaker cannon which has enormous range, meaning that the tanks are most often deployed far behind the front lines, able to rain death down from afar. The artillery officers of the guard, through cool and discerning calculation, can neutralise enemy threats with high explosives long before they come to threaten the Imperial force. So let's see how these guys perform on the tabletop. Basilisks are of course a heavy support choice for Codex Astra Militarum. They can be fielded in squadrons of 1-3, to three, and each Basilisk will set you back 108 points with no upgrades. For that price, you pack a Earthshaker cannon and a heavy bolter, and you have a light tank kind of stat line. It actually has very good movement at 12 inches, weapon skill 6 up, ballistic skill 4 up, strength 6, toughness 6, so a little fragile, 11 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 7, and a 3 up save. It of course degrades in the normal way, when it gets to less than half wounds and less than a quarter wounds respectively. We all know what heavy bolters do, so let's take a look at that Earthshaker cannon. I really like the fact that the Earthshaker cannon has a 240 inch range. It's always been a fun little feature, and I quite like the way that Games Workshop is optimistic enough that you might be playing on a table big enough for that to take into effect. Quite a lot of the time, your Basilisk will be in range of most of the gaming room you're playing in, which could be quite fun if you're playing any big Apocalypse games or something like that. In terms of a normal game of 40k though, it means that it will basically be always in range of your opponent, as also it doesn't need line of sight. It's a heavy d6 weapon, strength 9, AP-3 and damage d3, so fairly well suited to busting heavy targets, and you roll two dice for the number of shots it gets, and you pick the highest. The average roll that you get from this will be around 4.5, so you can usually expect around 4 or 5 shots out of your Basilisk per turn, so usually 2 hits, maybe 3. On average, each Basilisk will do 2.5 wounds to a standard vehicle, whether it's toughness 7 or 8, so this thing isn't likely to be one-shotting any battle tanks, but a few of them will really make a big dent, and you can use it to soften up targets for your other units to take out. The Basilisk has a few options. It can take options from the vehicle equipment list. I honestly wouldn't bother with the Auger Array, Track Guards or Dozer Blade, but personally I'd pretty much always pick up a Heavy Stubber for this guy. At only 2 points, even if you're not firing it every single game, it is an incredibly good pick for the number of shots you get. You can also take a Hunter Killer Missile, which you could pick up if you really want to overload your opponent with high strength shooting turn 1. I tend to prefer these on higher ballistic skill platforms though, but if you've got some way to buff this guy's damage output through stratagems or characters, then it could be worth picking up as he is likely to be staying still. You can swap that Heavy Bolter for a Heavy Flamer for 6 extra points, but honestly don't. This guy does not want to be anywhere near the front line, it only gives him a chance of being locked up in close combat. As per normal, with several of the Imperial Guard vehicle squadrons, if you set them up next to each other within 6 inches, then they operate independently. It can explode on the normal roll of a 6, and it does have smoke launchers if it absolutely needs to try and keep safe for a turn. Though to be honest, you're always going to have something to shoot at with that Earthshaker cannon, so they won't be used quite as much as with some tanks. So overall, it's an incredibly long-ranged artillery tank, that will put a few wounds on basically anything, and it's probably best value stacking wounds on enemy heavy tanks. So let's take a look at the various ways that we can get more out of this guy. Firstly, with regiment choice, both Cadian and Cascian are decent options, although Cadian will have slightly higher damage output for Basilisks, due to reroll ones being a 17% buff, which is higher than the Cascians get, due to that main cannon already being able to roll two dice and picking the highest it makes the Cascham roll a bit less valuable. So if it was a straight choice between the two, I would recommend Cadian, and it also affects its other weapons. In theory, this guy really shouldn't ever have to move in a game of 40k, so you should be typically getting those re-roll ones. A Talarm Basilisk could be an interesting pick as well. 
Due to it having high mobility, you could potentially move it 12 inches per turn and still fire away with that main cannon, which would be a bit of a silly sight to see on the tabletop, but it could allow you to have some decent mobility to get its secondary weapons in range, or potentially reposition optimally to try and hide out of line of sight or get away from enemy advancing units. The other regiments are a bit less impressive in my opinion. Valhallans can help with degrading a little bit, though obviously it only ever comes into effect if the tank is injured and not killed, which isn't guaranteed. Steel Legion will give it some resistance against AP-1 weapons, good against some but less against others. Hopefully you're never getting charged so Mordian Better Overwatch won't come into effect, and you certainly don't really need the extra range for Vostroin, though I guess it might help the secondary weapons a little bit with the choice of targets they might have. One other advantage for Cadian is overlapping fields of fire, which is very solid on basilisks, as hitting on threes re-rolling ones is over a 50% damage increase over your standard issue basilisk. In terms of character support, either Commissar Yarrick or Harker can give re-roll ones to the unit if it doesn't already have it, which is a 17% increase in damage, but bear in mind that you have to be buffing at least three or more basilisks for those re-roll ones to be more valuable than just investing in more basilisks or six or more if you're Commissar Yarrick, and even then, you lose out on the defensive profile that you would have got if you had just invested in more basilisks. So while nice, it isn't the most efficient buff unless you're using these guys for other reasons too. Tech Priest Engine Seers can repair tanks and aren't a bad pickup if you are playing a heavy mech list, and Psychers could potentially make basilisks harder to hit or have a higher save, but to be honest, you're better off applying these buffs to bigger, more fragile, more expensive units, Things like Tank Commanders, Knight Commander Pask, or Bane Blades, for example. If you are running multiple Basilisks, then the opponent can just shoot a different one, making those Psychic buffs useless. Basilisks do have their own Vigilist detachment, the Emperor's Wrath Artillery Company, which is in my opinion probably the strongest Vigilist formation. This can be a really solid pickup, both for the Warlord Trait and Relic, giving extra AP and ignores cover to one unit, and the Stratagems can allow you to forego shooting to reduce an enemy move characteristic by half, which could be potentially really quite powerful if you slow a powerful unit. Finally, it will also let you shoot a Basilisk twice for two command points, which can make the firepower very efficient, particularly if you're combining that with other buffs. If you're running multiple Basilisks, I would almost certainly include this Vigilist formation. Finally, we come to Stratagems, aside from the ones that we've already mentioned. Jury Rigging can be used to regain a wound, typically not really very worth it for the command points, unless it actually gets you hitting on a higher bracket. If it makes a difference between hitting on 5s and hitting on 4s, then it's typically a good shout. Aerial Spotter is a Basilisk unique stratagem that can allow you to reroll all failed hits with this unit. I'd say that this typically isn't worth it, as 2 command points is a lot. It only gets into being more worth it if you're combining it with already using that Fire Twice stratagem from the Vigilist formation, and perhaps either ignores cover or the extra AP Warlord trait, as all of these make the Basilisk a lot more deadly, so stacking re-rolls to hit on top of all that might actually start to be a reasonable use of command points. Put all of those together and you'll get an average of 8 wounds on any hard target, which if used in the early parts of the game could really help eliminate enemy threats before they eliminate you. So I wouldn't typically use this one, unless you're stacking a lot of buffs together on the Basilisk. If bad things happen and your Basilisk is looking like it's getting charged, you could consider defensive gunners to hit on fives, particularly if the enemy unit is quite weak and you might kill them like this. And if you do happen to be in close combat with just one weak enemy infantry model, then using crush them to try and get him out of the way to free you up to fire next turn also isn't a bad idea. Finally, Vengeance for Cadia is always worth mentioning whenever you're fighting Chaos, Use it on the biggest, nastiest unit you have every turn, which in some situations might be the Basilisk. One character that I did forget to mention earlier is the Master of Ordnance, who has good synergy with this guy. He gives reroll ones when the Basilisk is targeting units outside 36 inches, which it often will be because of that incredibly long range gun. At 30 points, is a lot more palatable than Yarrick or Harker if you're just looking for rerolls. And he also comes with his own artillery barrage of his own, so he also strengthens your shooting on turn 1 that way. He can also be a relic and warlord trait caddy for that vigilist detachment as well, meaning that he can be a great character all round for supporting your guns. So how would I field basilisks on the table then? As I've said, I would typically field them with just the heavy stubber and heavy bolter, putting them at 110 points each. I'd probably field one or two of them, most likely alongside a wyvern or two, and I'd use the Emperor's Wrath Artillery Company to get access to those key stratagems. 
in this little formation of three or four tanks. I typically either include a Master of Ordnance or use one of my company commanders to be a possible caddy for the Relic and Warlord trait, as you can buy those in or choose not to depending on the opponent. We want to set up our little formation, either really far back in a corner if we just have Basilisks, or perhaps somewhere a bit more centrally if we're also trying to get the Wyvern in range as well, and then play a game of point and delete, using our guns to neutralise the threats as we need them to. I'd often choose to fire the Basilisks last myself, because they're likely to be the most flexible firepower that you have, whereas most of the other guns on the table with direct line of sight or shorter range are going to be limited with what targets they can fire at. That means that you could let all of the other guns do what they can do to the enemy army, and use your basilisks to try and knock the last few wounds off certain enemy tanks, as they can choose exactly what they shoot at. In any game that I'm going second and I have lots of vehicles that are out of cover, I'd think about using prepared positions to give them a nice 2-up save turn 1, and depending on whether the enemy army is mainly ranged or mainly melee, you could either think about hiding them out of line of sight to keep them safe from enemy guns, or deploying them in line of sight, maybe a little bit further up the board, to make sure you can fire those heavy bolters and heavy stubbers, which will chip in decently against infantry formations. Basilisks can be particularly useful in the late game, where a few extra high power shots might just be able to take out a crucial infantryman hiding on an objective, or even using their decent mobility to move forward and capture objectives after a lot of your army has been eliminated. Ignore's line of sight shooting is a really powerful option in 40k, and Basilisks being very good at it is a real strength to the guard army. So how does the Basilisk stake up against competitors then? Its main artillery rival is the Mandacore, which performs an almost identical role, but with its damage front-loaded on the first four turns, and then it's out of rockets. Both of them have pretty much even damage output, though I am intending to do a Basilisk vs Manticore comparison video, where we can really thrash out the numbers. But the main reason that I choose the Basilisk over the Manticore, at least at the moment, is that Vigilus formation. Those stratagems and those buffs from the Trait and Relic are really just that good. In terms of sheer damage output, the Basilisk will be behind things like Lehman Rosses with Battle Cannons and Last Cannons, or even more higher damage units such as Tank Commanders. This is kind of to be expected really. The Lehman Rosses are direct fire weapons, so are generally a lot more limited in what they can shoot at, whereas the Basilisk can literally pick any of its targets on the tabletop, so it's likely that you're going to have less damage output from a Basilisk point for point, compared with a lot of direct fire options like the Ross. For that reason, I wouldn't typically go too heavy on Basilisks. I'd use the Lehman Ross tanks as your hammer to generally damage the enemy army, and the Basilisks as more of a scalpel to apply some still very strong firepower exactly where it's needed, such as finishing off an injured unit that's about to do some more damage to your army next turn. That's why I'd usually advocate something like 1-3 to three Basilisks, rather than just going nuts and playing something like 9 or 10 of them, which the points would absolutely allow you to do if you felt like it. So, thanks very much for listening to another Auspex Tactics video. If you have any other thoughts or opinions on the Basilisk, or you think if I've missed any key strategies, then please let me know. I'll look forward to reading your comments. We'll be continuing with our Imperial Guard series over the next weeks and months. I'll be planning to do a new Guard video every second day, at least in the near future. So check back in a couple of days' time, where I'm planning to take a look at the Hellhound. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with this series as it unfolds. And also feel free to support me on Patreon if you are finding these videos useful to you. It really helps the channel out and helps me focus more on this in my actual working time rather than just in weekends and evenings as I am at the moment. Thanks again for listening and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.